Hello and welcome back. And that's right, do you know the Synology DS423 Plus is a year old? It's been around for a year and I would say it's done a lot of things good and a lot of other things not quite so good. And in this video, if you're sitting on the fence wondering about this system one year on, whether it deserves your money, your data, or whether you should sit around and wait for a new refresh or an upgraded model, hopefully this video is going to help you. I'm going to tell you four things about it that one year on, I'd say are pretty, still pretty darn good. But I'm also going to give you four things that I I would argue really might make you want to sit on the fence a wee bit longer. If you already watched a review from a year ago or you watched our six months on a uh, video a little while ago, a lot of the things I'm going to touch on today are already included in those, but a few little tweaks and extras for the extra time. So let's crack on with our first point. That's damn right, there's a reason I've left this thing running on the table all the way through the introduction to this video, and that is simply that, do you know what, in terms of physical footprint, imprint on your actual environment day to day, this thing is very, very minimal. Right now, this system is populated by four hard drives, and I've got it running in uh, not full active mode, but it's ready. The drives aren't being accessed because we're not here to review the drives. And as you can see, it's got a very, very small physical imprint. I've got that rubber panel there underneath that I've added just because of vibrations on the mic, but you really don't need to use one of those. It is a low noise system when in operation, which is pretty darn good. To put that into perspective, here is a decibel meter here on screen, and it's just running from my phone, and I'm going to stop talking for a few seconds. And as you can see, it barely left the 20s there. On top of that, when it comes to power consumption, we had this thing hooked up and tested it in full standby mode and full active mode. The full active report in there was somewhere between 27 to 31 watts, fully populated with drives, full hammering access. And when we had the system on standby mode, just waiting in hard drive hibernation, it went as low as 7 to 8 watts. That's an incredibly low number for a 4-bay Intel-powered RAID NAS system. This one you may already know, and that is, if you were going for a Synology now because of the software, this is the lowest price point to take advantage of everything. It doesn't matter what Synology service you have heard about, this supports it all. You can go for the first party apps, again, your uh, active backup suite, you can go for your Synology drive, you can go for any of the multimedia suite, virtualization containers, any of that stuff, it's all included. But it's the service stuff. It's the support of BTRFS. It's the support of write once, read many encrypted volumes, SSD, um, M2 NVMe SSD pools, if you wish. You can go ahead within this to create individual volumes. You can go ahead on a system like this and utilize Synology hybrid RAID uh, all the way up to one and two drive failure protection, snapshots, everything that Synology promote on their platform is possible with this NAS. And talking of things that this NAS support, integrated graphics. As the years have gone on, Synology has slowly but surely moved away from most of its integrated graphics systems, focusing a lot more on file processing server-grade CPU from the likes of AMD and, of course, Intel as well. This is one of the very, very, very few currently available Synology NASes that feature integrated graphics. It's got an Intel Celeron inside there, the J4125, more on that later on, you know what that means. But that CPU means integrated graphics and it means if you can use it for multimedia and in particular Plex Media Server, you are gonna have a much better fully featured experience of things like conversions and transcoding in a way that non-integrated systems are gonna use more hardware resources to get the job done. It doesn't mean to say that those other NASes can't do it, but they don't have to specialize CPU uh, integrated graphics that allow it to be done utilizing far 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 less CPU utilization and overall power consumption when in use. This as I say there's only currently available two other NAS devices in the current lineup of Synology that have integrated graphics. There's this device and then there is the DS224 Plus and the DVO1622 a surveillance optimized NAS and neither of those other two feature four bays of storage and therefore better redundancy versus storage capacity.
This point is for those of you that have heard it on the grapevine about Synology Now Solutions from, you know, professional colleagues, friends and family about how good the system is. If that was in the last five years, chances are it's because they were using a device known as the DS920 Plus, one of the most popular Synology NAS devices the brand has ever released. Four to five star reviews across the board. It balanced price point versus hardware versus capability. And I tell you right now in the current lineup of Synology NAS systems, the closest you can get to that model is this one. It's got less memory than the DS920 Plus and it's less expandable than the 920 Plus. More on all of that later on, but it has to be said that if you want a similar experience to the NAS that everyone was raving about, the DS423 Plus is the best you're going to get. Time to roll in the mud a bit and talk about those negatives. Compatibility on this system mm, has not got better in the 12 months since I reviewed it a year ago. This system not only is still utilizing Synology's rather restrained compatibility listings, so things like uh, WD Iron Wolf Pro drives, uh, uh, Seagate Iron Wolf Pro drives, WD Red Pro drives, uh, Toshiba Enterprise grade drives, and then you move on to the M2 NVMEs. You can't use non Synology M2 NVMEs on compatibility listings. Ultimately, it means that the storage media that you can actually use inside this system, as far as officially supported drives go, is much, 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 much smaller. It doesn't stop you using them. If you use third-party hard drives that are non-Synology or third-party drives, uh, uh, sorry, uh, third-party drives, which are, of course, non-Synology, but third-party drives anyway that aren't on the compatibility list, you can still use them. Unfortunately, when you do use those third-party drives, it can make the system flag up the odd warning and if there ever is an incident where those drives can be related to the system failing as incredibly minuscule as that is Synology will probably drop your warranty support pretty easily if it's related to the non-compatible drive use. This is one that Synology have done us dirty on for a long time, and that is they only arrive with one gigabit Ethernet on this system. Not only is there no available means to upgrade it with a PCIe card, or maybe even Synology's own modular tiny 10 GB upgrade, but on top of that, there is no support of USB upgrades to 5 gigabit Ethernet or 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. You can't use even extra you know additions like this to add via a usb two further ethernet ports there you're limited to one gbe on this system and i know there's a lot of you that are going to go well one gb is five two point five g's a fat fat five gbe is nothing and 10 gbe is a bit of a pipe dream at this price i get that but one gigabit ethernet uh, network interface ports you know the little nicks there they're sticking on there 2.5 g isn't that much more aggressive and I would argue definitely within the affordability spectrum of a system at this 450 500 nicker price tag. As good as all that storage stuff is, I said earlier on about support of Synology Hybrid RAID, support of BTRFS Fast RAID rebuilds and the like, I've got to say right now, the fact this system can't be expanded is a real pain in the bum. Yes, you could go ahead if you choose and partially populate it and add more drives later in. Yes, you could go ahead and mix up those drives with larger capacity drives with SHR, which is always good. It has to be said that the inability to expand this storage device with an expansion like the DX517 is going to be a pain for some of you in terms of long-term storage. You're going to have to scale up the original storage drive you put inside on day one which you know will not only increase the price but will increase the noise level of the system when in operation because of larger hard drives making more noise when they're in use and the lack of expandability on this needs to be factored in if you're going to be deploying it long term <laughs> This next complaint was my biggest problem back in 2023 when I reviewed this and it was my biggest problem six months on it continues to be my biggest problem now one year since its release and that is the memory and the CPU on this are lackluster. Let's tackle that CPU first. That CPU, the J4125, is an old CPU. It's released in 20, 2019. Intel have long since turned their back on that CPU with several refreshes. And although there are those of you that would argue it's a very power efficient CPU at a 10 watt TDP, there have been several different CPUs released in the timeline by Intel. Uh, some as, you know, within 2021 and 2022, so well within the production cycle of this device, that are uh, likewise. 10 watt TDP, much like the Intel Pentium N6005, a CPU that's being banded around next to Celeron at the same price tag everywhere else. And also that CPU has a higher integrated graphics power and supports up to 16 gig of memory. The CPU inside this, on the other hand, supports 8 gig of memory officially, and this thing only arrives with a maximum 6 gig. <laughs> 
which is madness. It arrives with two gig of pre-soldered memory, so you can't get it out from there. When we're using a base level system, this system was already utilizing 16% of that available two gig of memory, went in idle with no storage volume, no storage pool, nothing. It had doing nothing at all, and the system was still hoarding some of that extra memory that was using 16% of that two gig default memory while the system was doing nothing. And I know it will intelligently scale up and flush the cache when needed, but there's still no avoiding that after that, the fact that I can only upgrade to six gig, which is a weird number, by the way, uh, four gig module and two gig soldiers is already weird and unconventional, but the fact I can't even hit the eight gig maximum on this to fully saturate uh, the memory bandwidth internally is a right pain in the bum. And with other better CPUs that support more memory out there in the market, it's just a damn shame. But there you go, that is the DS423 Plus one year on. What do you guys think? Have you bought this system? What do you like? What do you don't like? Let me know in the comments. There's links in the description to other guides and featured videos we've done on this from the likes of Plex Media Server and others. And on top of that, other comparisons we've made between this and other units. If Synology are gonna be doing more with this system or releasing new ones, we will let you know in the next few months. So do subscribe to stay tuned for that. But apart from that, there's links in the description to all of our support pages, most of which are free. But if you wanna go paid and quick, the options are there and other than that thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time